is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 167. My name is Zach Graham, your host here in the North End, joined, as always, by my good buddy. He's on record as my best friend. His name is Ian Me Show, and we call him... Eason here, midweek, Austin, Texas, uh, smack in the middle of the League's Cup break that did come for us eventually. Uh, And we are also about six hours away from the transfer window closing as we are starting to record this episode. So I will ask you, as I always do, how you feeling, my friend? I am doing well, putting all things aside outside of Austin FC and still... Got my fingers crossed that something's going to come across our desk here in the next six hours, and we'll have some exciting news to talk about. But other than that, you know, we're going status quo here and making sure that we get the information, the news, stats, figures, data, songs to the people. (laughs) All of those things and more coming up on this episode. We'll talk about a new signing for Austin FC 2. Then we'll talk, we'll kind of wrap up the transfer window here and then uh Damian Loss update we'll talk about that best keeper in the world and uh an extensive last business day here on episode 167 before we get into all of that just want to remind you all listening or watching that the best way to support the show is by downloading the audio version of this episode wherever you get your podcasts and if where you get your podcasts has the option to toggle on auto downloads go ahead and do that And then you don't even have to think about supporting the show further. You are doing so by pushing that button. Uh, And if you want to go the extra mile, you can rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast on that same platform. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel. That also helps us grow the show. You can hit the notification bell to know when a live stream pops up, like it will on Tuesday, or a new episode goes live. And of course, on this episode, hit that thumbs up, like the video, help us battle those YouTube algorithm overlords, atone for your sins. Wash yourselves clean in the waters of the North End. E, I mentioned that live stream, so we can just start off with some programming notes here. Uh, Unless something crazy happens between now and Sunday, we're going to go ahead and take this Sunday off as well because on Tuesday, finally, at long last, the best ball transfer window draft uh, will be going live with all of our friends uh, from We Are Austin TV, Moon Tower Soccer, Verde All Day, Texas Ring of Fire, the Verde Pendant Podcast, uh, making those transfers, those changes to our best ball rosters headed into the final quarter of the season. Uh, and one thing I've been thinking about, too, that I think we got to kick around. I think we need to do a second transfer window draft for the best ball league uh, it, it, when the initial window closes earlier in the season. And maybe, you know, I'm not totally saying that because our team got screwed <laughs> by injuries and that would have helped us out immensely. Uh, but, you know, just a little bit more interaction between us and some of our friends here in the podcast space. So that's Tuesday. And then on Wednesday's regularly scheduled episode, we will have the Verde Pendant podcast on completing our home and home set here in August. So it's going to be a busy week next week here on this channel, uh, leading up to the restart of the MLS regular season. Yeah, dude, always a good time to kick it with those homies. You know, we uh, we had a rough go of it this year with best ball, so I understand the uh, <laughs> desire to implement another window here for us. But, um, you know, you are the commissioner, so we can really do what <laughs> yeah. we want. And, you know, we can really set the, set the tone, set the rules, however we yeah. see fit. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about it, not just our roster, right? But by that point of like late April is when that primary window closes. Like Emmanuel Reynoso had already been gone yeah. from Minnesota, right? We had had a couple things happen. But Aaron Bupenza yeah. had challenged a boxer outside of a bar, right? There were changes that could have been made to make it, I think, more fun for everybody. So we'll deal with that when it comes next year. Let's deal with the news that was made official today on Wednesday afternoon, and that is that Austin FC2 announced that they reached an agreement with Bray Wanderers of the Irish First Division, which is a little tricky because their first division is actually their second division, right? Their premier division in Mm -hmm. Ireland, I believe, is that top tier of Irish football. So that's not confusing at all. Uh, Bray Wanderers in that second tier of the Irish football pyramid. 
FC Dill has acquired forward Peter Grogan, free transfer here. He's a 19-year-old forward, uh, and we've got him on a deal with FC2 through 2026 with two option years in 2027 and 2028. Uh, so that is now the uh, longest contract on the books for Austin FC2. Nobody else had been guaranteed on a contract through 2025, to my knowledge, before this signing. Um, so, Peter Grogan, uh, welcome to the team. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club, indeed. You know, uh, again, this window has, or this time frame is, has all been hyper focused on what we're doing for the main club here and we get this signing for FC Toe. and you know I'm of course I'm excited I'm excited for them to bolster their roster uh, this has been a difficult season for them but still just hoping for something coming through <laughs> the pipelines here from Roto one last you know little little dish that he can serve yeah. up for us here to get us uh past that point that we felt like you know we needed another another high quality player to come in here and really help us make this last push but um excited for peter excited for the fc toe guys um and i know you got a little bit more on his profile yeah so um again 19 years old so that that pro career is not uh, with most fc toe uh acquisitions right it's not a lengthy resume but he did appear in 19 matches for bray wanderers last season Seven goals, three assists. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, a very productive uh, stat line, box score, what have you. I think, again, no matter what league you're in, as we've talked about with some of these rumors over the last month or so, like right, you think back to Malik Sanogo, right, and talking about him where he was playing at a, a lower level, certainly lower than, than MLS. But the leading score, I think it was Bundesliga 2 for him, right? So... 10 goal contributions, 19 matches. Um, I'm excited to see Peter Grogan go to work here. Again, on a side where we've gotten healthier and deeper kind of across the board over the last month or two this summer, and specifically in the attack, getting CJ and Jimmy down there for a number of these games, the Garcias back healthy, um, but adding Grogan up top. Uh, and again, clearly Roto and his scouting team see something in this kid to give him a contract through 2026 and then tacking on two more option years too. Yeah. That's the most interesting thing to me. You know, obviously I'm not, I don't know anything about what is this? The, you said the Bray Wanderers. Bray Wanderers. Yeah. Sounds like a <laughs> professional wrestler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't speak on the league. I can't speak on the team or anything like that, but obviously if, if they're passing out that duration of a contract, I'm going to go ahead and assume that they see something in this kid um, and go ahead and trust in that process as well. You know, ever the optimist over here for FC toe, but you know, time is of the essence for those guys. And uh, we'll get into that later with a little less business day stuff and preview, but yeah, it he, hopefully you can hit the ground running, you know, and, and really yeah. just come out and make a big impact here, but I'm not going to hold into that uh, yeah, for sure for, for his first, his, his first tenure here with, with Austin FC too. Yeah. And a couple of things too, before we move on, like I, this is not the first time that it has been discussed in the Austin FC fan space that Roto and the club may potentially be using some of these FC to contracts, especially these international guys, a Ruben Bonacera, a Nico Van Rijn, a Peter Grogan, just to thinking about the guys who have been brought in of late um, as kind of a staging ground for potential U22 or supplemental contracts like we did with Jimmy drafting him in the second round, right? Going through the process with FC Toe and then getting that supplemental spot. So I think that is certainly in the cards if Grogan pans out here. Um, but then I think the, the more concrete um, takeaway that you and I were discussing before we hit record here today, I believe this is the seventh and final international slot mm. for Austin FC Two. Uh, eight international slots for the first team, just seven for the second team. So um, reading off the roster here, I think we've got Allstrup as one, Van Rijn as two, Bonachera as three, Shaik Ture as four, Alonzo Ramirez as five, Boba Sibra Huanga as six, and Peter Grogan as seven. I think that those are our seven international slots. So we don't dive too deep into those next pro roster rules and regulations too often, but we did today. And I think that is a, an important takeaway because you, you listen to some of those names, right? 
that has been Roto filling up that part of the roster build over the last six, seven months. Yeah. What are you making of that? I don't know what to make of it with those international guys and getting that filled up here. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I lean into the idea that we could be auditioning some of these guys for supplemental first team slots, or again, maybe even U 22, but I, I think that is less likely for these guys. Um, but again, you see a lot of these guys coming in very young for their position, right? At 19, no matter what position you're playing. Um, I, I just think, especially because we've seen multiple guys, this is the third guy from Europe yeah. since the season started. So at, at the very least, we are utilizing that network of scouts that Roto has deployed all over the world, but specifically in Europe to fill some of these slots. And it, it is a departure, I think, from how we saw – uh, uh, Sean Rubio managed this team last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you can't knock Sean as a title winning team, uh, yeah. but a different direction for Roto here. Do you think potentially it could be like trying to develop these dudes and then sell them back across the pond? You know, absolutely. Or, or USL sides, right? We sold Valentin Noel undisclosed mm-hmm. fee. Uh, again, you can't turn that into any sort of gam, but we kept that sell on percentage and that money goes to the club. And I imagine, right. Grogan comes in on a free transfer, but if we have to pay for anybody, which again, I, I don't think that's in the cards either because I don't think Roto wants to use club funds to acquire guys for this second team roster. Um, but you can certainly turn around and try to sell these guys, even if it's not, you know, back overseas, we've got that USL level here uh, in the States. Yeah. All right. We'll have to see how it plays out then. Yeah. So excited to see, Grogan in action. It looked like from the press release that he is still uh, pending receipt of his visa, so may not be in action here for another couple games. Uh, let's move on to the first team here, and and this is where I will say, e, again, we are uh, as we are recording this six hours and eight minutes away from the transfer window closing. So, if there is news, we will get uh, an interruption and hopefully an exciting, uh, an excited uh zg and e talking about whatever happened but if not (laughs) we will continue here uh so wrapping up this transfer window man um i gotta Mm. say i am uh a little bit surprised a little bit disappointed um that we didn't add anybody after the window really opened right because i believe we had all of our three uh big additions your your bukhari desler and Alexander Svatok, uh, I believe those guys were signed, sealed, delivered before the window opened on July 18th. We also added Jimmy Farkelin to the supplemental roster. Uh, you know, I think that was back in June uh, and nothing since then. So mm-hmm. um, I think, again, I had my hopes up as I tend to do. And uh, I, I think, again, I'm not disappointed at all. In the the outcome of the window, I think if you were a third party reviewing all 29 teams and their activity during this window, we may not be number one, but I think we're probably top five in terms of like what we did to improve the roster. Um, Because, you know, some of these some of these teams that are already contenders, right, they have improved. But I think our floor as a roster talent wise just took a, a significant leap compared to almost every other club in the league. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's hard to say disappointed um, just because, you, you know, the three names you reeled off right there, like we <laughs> right. are beyond excited about the prospect of all three of these guys being on the pitch. At the same time, we've already seen what Dessler brings to an extent. We've already seen what Bukhari brings to an extent, you know, and like to really see them fully acclimated with their teammates in our system, going out there and producing and performing – is something that I can't wait for entirely, you know? So it's like you look at it and, you know, the expectation around this window and and what we were thinking was coming in and we might've gotten a little, you know, our eyes might've gotten too big for our stomach to, uh, you know, <laughs> to say there, but um, I'm still holding out hope, man. I don't know. You know, I, I know you want to get a little something off your chest about Josh here coming up. Uh, <laughs> and I, I understand that too, because that fed, that fed the fire and, you know, fed the flames and everything like that, that, that this work wasn't done yet. Um, but I can't say disappointed. I don't think you are either, obviously, right. but it's just we thought that once that window really opened, like officially opened, that it was almost like floodgates coming through here 
Um, yeah. but again, limited in what we can really do, the assets that we can actually move. We're we're up against it now, right? With with the entirety of our roster in regards to being yeah. at capacity for players. So it's a one in, one out situation with everything we're gonna we're gonna see or potentially see going forward here. But um, you know, I I I'm still just so elated about who's here now and what the team yeah. looks like. I just yeah. can't be anything other than super excited about it. Well, we haven't we haven't even seen Spa Talk in yep. action yet, yep. right? So it's not like we've unwrapped all the presents that were under the the summer tree there. Um, and and spot on, I am not disappointed at all in the window. It's that once we got those three guys in prior to the window opening, it was like, oh, we can almost, we can reach yeah. out and touch that ceiling outcome where you buy down Alex Ring, we get another DP in here, maybe a U twenty two or two. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there are so many different ways that Roto could operate. And, and again, I, I think that the league rug pulling the reported second buyout that was supposed to be coming. And again, we talked about the players association pushback, totally get that. And, mm-hmm. and that's, that's, that's fair why it didn't happen, but it's hard for me not to sit here and think that Roto had plans in the works, uh, to, to make something out of that. Um, yeah. again, that could not be the case, but that is how I feel about that. And, and, uh, like you mentioned, the fact that we had already filled up our 20 slots, the one in one out nature, uh, some other teams went out that we knew were center back needy, filled them with, I think probably higher quality players than we have available for trade. And at the end of the day, when you're talking about outbound transfers and trades and sales, there has to be a buyer. Yeah. And there just may not be one for a Matt Hedges or any of the other uh, younger and uh, lengthier contracted players here on the roster, specifically at center back where we expected a, a move to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible for me to sit here and be like, I don't think that Roto forecasted or was attempting to use that second buyout. And I also don't know what type of communication they could have gotten from the league in regard to this potentially coming through the pipeline at some point in time. But you'd have to think that this was on the table throughout the entire course of this, uh, you know, planning of the rebuild and everything. Um, And, you know, Tony's spent a lot of money as of late in regards to who we're bringing in and everything like that. So that might also be in play here, not wanting to spend money on buying Alex down and then going out, trying to move one of these center backs and grabbing somebody. But still, I still think it can happen. You know, like uh, when did the, the Diego trade came it was the final day of it the was window the final last year. Day. It was the morning. Okay. Um, but so and and I did see. I, I want to say this was Mike Carniola that I saw him bring this up. If I'm mistaken, I apologize. Um, but Moise Bombito, there has of course been a lot of action around the league. Mm-hmm. Colorado sold Moise Bombito, who, by the way, super draft pick last year. Seven million dollars uh, wow. uh, heading over to Europe, so that is some good business there by the Rapids. Um, you, I mean, you got to so, assume uh, all these offices are open late tonight. You know, like this is not yeah, a regular day. Well, if you're not, then you're just that you should be fired, probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but so the the suggestion was, what if we are moving a center back to Colorado? We had to wait for the Bombito deal to clear. And then that, again, would open up a spot for us to announce uh, another senior signing. So, again, as we're talking here, now we are six hours away. So, <laughs> if you are hearing this uninterrupted, nothing happened. <laughs> so, um, you you brought up Josh earlier, man. And this is what I was, like, half-jokingly earlier today. Like, at the press conference last week, he lets it slip, right, that maybe one or two more players are coming. And that in a vacuum I have no issue with. But the fact that... Coach Wolf, all year, any question about player personnel, about the roster, what have you, that's a roto question. That's not me. Mm -hmm. Next question. We're brushing it all off. If you threw us that bone and we don't get a player, what the fuck, man? Yeah. You couldn't wait one more week. You could wait one week, not say anything. We can't make any more moves. Couldn't help himself. And if he tries to pass Peter Grogan off as one of the players he was talking about, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like saying you're going to show up to the party with three bottles of liquor and then you show up and you've got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you know, also, I mean, like, what was the context there? 
Was he asked directly about? Uh, it seems like he just kind of dropped that. No. Oh, okay. He was asked. Well, he. I don't. I don't even remember. It, it was a Phil question, and I don't. I don't remember if he was like, "Hey, are there going to be more players added?" But it was a roster question. Okay. Um, and he may have even said, again, I don't remember the full quote. He may have even been like, "Yeah, that's a roto question," but. Mm-hmm. And again, he just hasn't said anything like that all year. So that's why for me, and I think a lot of other fans, it was like, well, that's different. And yeah. like, it, it did give me a lot of confidence that there was going to be more movement. Yeah. I, and I think that might, like when you were taking, we were talking earlier before about like not actually being disappointed, but like when you throw this in the mix and it's like, oh, the head coach just said, hey, there's potentially one or two other players like coming. Then it was like, okay, like for me, I, that solidified it even more. I thought for sure we are going to be doing this episode with somebody else in tow here. Um, yeah. So, you know, what are we at? What are we at in the clock now? 5.58? <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're under six hours now. There we go. <laughs> yeah, because I think what uh, Tommy Scoop said, 11.59 Central. So is clock just now ticking to 6 p.m. Central here. So, so 12.59 um, Eastern? The fuck? Uh, no, cent- Central. Uh, or uh, 11.59 p.m. Central. Sorry. Yeah, so it's 12.59 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, and middle of the night in Europe. So, <laughs> and there's a, with a global sport like this, there's just no good way to set a deadline. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, so I think also, um, you know, you look at the roster sheets at the northendpodcast.com. Those are updated uh, as of this episode's release. We have one of the eight international slots empty, right? Yeah. Um, so unless you're filling that for the rest of this season with a you know a, a three month Alonzo Ramirez, but again that you got to buy him from Atlas. I don't think that's happening. Whether it's yep. somebody else, surely we have thought right. I would not. I would not think that that Roto would have forgotten that we could shop that last international slot for you know who knows 25 50k gam for the rest of this year. Obviously, you don't want to move that. You can trade international slots for multiple years you don't want to do that but that is just another asset we have that if we're not bringing anybody else in we could dangle out there for cheap what's your uh what's your ranking level confidence about something getting done here oh very out of, low out of very, very low uh two two okay yeah two I, it's just you know yeah I would think I, I'm I'm not familiar enough with the transfer window deadline to know if you know between ten and midnight tonight we're going to have a flurry of of mm-hmm. signings. It's been relatively quiet throughout the day. Um, I I think I've seen Tom Bogert report on as many next pro signings between Houston and Austin as as MLS signings. So yeah. um, maybe we do get that flurry, and maybe Austin is included. Um, and the last the last rumor we had was Sonogo, right? Yes. And yeah. were we uh, under the assumption that he was going to be coming in? I think we were. Well, I was certainly under the assumption that he was coming back stateside to MLS because um, well, that was the report is like he's getting close. He's got offers from Columbus and Austin and New England and other unnamed teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he could. What was it? Uh, Anjé, right? He went yep. on trial with Anjé, who just got promoted. So totally get that uh, diversion there. Um, what, hmm. what is your, as we head barrel towards this window closing, what's, what's your out of 10? I mean, I, I, you know, when I asked you, I didn't really have a number before you answered. I said okay. two in my head as okay. well. So probably well, a two. up there. Yeah. Um, while we're given numbers and grades and, and that, uh, mm-hmm. let's give letter grades, right? What, what's your letter grade on the window as a whole? A. Yeah. Boy, I was gonna line, say a minus. A um, I mean, Yeah. I'm right there in between AA plus. I don't don't okay. see how you can't have it that high in regard to what who we brought in. The the name, the the name value alone with Bukhari is just insane. Yeah. You get a league un guy in Dessler, who's yeah. you know, we we've talked about who he's played against. You get a guy who's starting in the fucking Euros, who's the captain, yeah. right? Wasn't he the captain of that? He's the captain of he was the captain of his club team. Okay. Um, okay. He was a rotational defender for Ukraine, but when they went back five, he was that smack dab in the middle and he looked good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an A for me. Um, and, uh, you know, it obviously jumps up if something else comes through here and everything like sure. that. But, you know, I it, like if Svatok, like if we had just announced Svatok today, we're sitting here and we're saying A plus. 
Like we like Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. We are. It's just the timing of it. It is it is how long we have waited to get to this moment. It's the excitement, the hype that was surrounding it and everything like that. And I don't think Roto has not lived up to his word in regard to how he was approaching this. And like yeah. you said before, it's a three window situation. So we're still looking at that winter one. We just understand that this is the one where more of the European players are available and right. active. I had a minus in my head and just because I was leaving whether or not something happens here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think there should be space because there was that possible ceiling outcome of U22s or another yeah. DP and stuff like that. And so I couldn't quite get to that, that a plus, but again, uh, I think that is a, a very good point by you that maybe the timing of the signings, um, the timing of the signings themselves were fantastic because it got at least those two guys mm -hmm. here ready, uh, you know, the first game that they could possibly appear. Um, but yeah, man, uh, if, if those three signings came in the last week, we'd be losing our minds. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, as we were two months ago, <laughs> exactly. You know, getting <laughs> yeah. these guys in, it's like going to a really nice dinner and you go outside and you got a little parking ticket, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll get over it. Right. So, um, well, let's just like, let's take a few minutes then um, and talk about what comes next in the winter. Cause obviously we'll have much more in-depth discussion on that when the season comes to a close and we truly get to that, you know, the off season where we're actually looking ahead to 2025, but obviously a lot of expiring deals on this first team. Um, there's only one that doesn't have an option. That's Hector Jimenez, but just reading off this, this list with some cap hits and other designations that are coming free. Alex ring. He does have that, that 2025 option for next year. Uh, the way Roto talks about it, it sounds like most of those crazy Reina poison pills in these contracts are in the past. Okay. Um, and you would certainly think so on, on Alex ring. Um, I Wait. yeah <laughs> all right adding in the landon probably <laughs> so uh that will clear right uh max cap uh hit 683k and that of course that goes up next year as the salary cap continues to increase uh and would open up that third dp slot which is no longer tied to the u22 initiative matt hedges has two option years remaining his cap hit is 561k but it's even higher than that we just that's one of those tam guys that we don't know exactly how much targeted allocation money we have to use on him uh, mm. because of his salary. So uh, again, when you look at the northendpodcast.com in that cap sheet, um, that is just our best salary estimate. Cause of course we don't have the actual numbers in for the three new guys. Um, and we don't know the actual TAM allocations to Matt Hedges, to Johan Valencia. Uh, and I, believe Leo Weissen, but I may be mistaken on that. So Hedges, 561K cap hit plus that targeted allocation money. Johan Valencia, the Punisher, he has a 2025 option. His cap hit almost half a million, 495K. And because of that initial transfer fee, he is another TAM player. So it's not much targeted allocation money that we are using on both of those guys, but it is, it does put them in that TAM range. And, um, both of those both of those guys have not proven, in my opinion, to be of that quality uh, in, in terms of like your perfect ideal MLS roster construction. Yep. You think that could be holding up a potential hedges deal if you're trying to move them? Like, how would that Absolutely. TAM situation Absolutely. work? They would ha we'd have to pass it on to them, and they would have to then pay even for this season, right? Well, so it would just be for this season, right? And I think it's prorated for like half because it's in the summer window. Okay. Um, but that's still not cheap for half, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't see why um, I don't see why many teams would be taking on Matt Hedges and then paying the tail on top of him to acquire him when and giving us Gam back, right? Yep. Like it's almost at this point, it's like ship him for free because the yeah. roster spot is very valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ethan Finley has an option for next season. He's a three hundred six thousand dollar cap hit. Matt Bersano has an option, but we know that Roto uh, moved him to the supplemental roster with that Gam buy down. So uh, it's not a cap hit for Bersano right now, but we would get that Gam usage back, and that would open a supplemental slot. Danny Pereira has an option for next year. He's just a one hundred thirty eight thousand dollar cap hit. And I was also thinking, I think what. Um, maybe standing in the way of this is even though he's graduated from that generation Adidas supplemental slot, 
I think he's still – technically, he's still on that same contract, and there may be um, something prohibiting Roto from buying Danny down to that vet minimum with Gam and open it. Because I was thinking that you could open up maybe a senior slot if you buy Danny down to that supplemental roster. He's the only guy left on the senior roster under 180 k uh, which is the number this season that you would uh, you have to be under to to be bought down, as we understand it. Uh, and again, Danny, when you're thinking about cap space opening up for next year, if he's going to be sticking around, and even yeah. if he's not, we probably want to give that extension so we can have control and get something back when he potentially could be sold. Um, Hotter Obrian, he has an option next year. He is mm. taking a five hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollar cap hit, and when we got him uh, in the what was it, the waiver draft from Dallas, his salary did go up year over year, so that could creep closer to six hundred k, and that puts me on the fence about our boy Hot Air. I, I I really enjoy having him on the team, but uh, again, from a just from a, a roster construction standpoint, I think that is a very interesting one. Um, coming up here in the winter diego rubio uh obviously a little bit cheaper a 390k cap hit he's got the option next year the way his last three months have been that is in question for me now whereas three months ago slam dunk pick it up now i'm glad we didn't at this point (laughs) yeah Um, i was gonna say yeah again he's still that's not still not terrible for what we've seen when, when he's healthy no Heinz Eich has a 2025 option. He's a 200K cap hit. Uh, again, that's a guy that certainly could have backloaded the two-year deal. Um, and mm. maybe they decline it and give him a you know that longer-term deal, that that security with a, a, a larger, longer contract. So we'll see about BHI. And then on the supplemental, I mentioned Hector Jimenez. No option. You got to think it's pro- he's probably done this year. So that would open a supplemental slot. We've got Jimmy Farkelin. Uh, two option years, of course, no cap hit for that supplemental supplemental slot. Uh, so you could open that slot if needed. But I, I imagine we pick up Jimmy's option as well. Um, so in total, you could clear if you declined everybody, which again, there are names in there. You don't want to decline all of those, but I think yep. most of them, eight senior slots, three supplemental slots. It's about 3.1 million in cap space. Again, across your cap your GAM and your TAM 3.1 million out of about 10.45 million total this year. Um, So not wild. Like last year, even before the auto triggers, we thought we were going to have like more than half of our cap open. Uh, We're a little bit more set now. Um, But again, that's because, right, you just brought in a DP in Bukhari. You brought in guys that you think are going to be at near, maybe a little bit above. You know, I would think Spot Talk and Dessler could very well be TAM players. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, 3.1 million and potentially 11 roster slots. And th- that supplemental roster is not full either. Uh, so, it's more like 13 ish roster slots, I think, that Roto's going to have at his disposal in the winter. So, again, this, this team is still going to look very different next year than it does even now, but certainly at the start of the year. And, and E, again, $3.1 million in potential cap space, a DP slot, and all three U22 initiative slots in with uh, in the winter window because Jean Kolmanich uh, ages out of the U22 program on his new extension, which kicks in next season. So DP slot, three U22s, around $3 million in space. Um, again, a lot of flexibility. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most of those guys you went through there on the list, I would be inclined to decline their yeah. options. Um, you know, and again, it's just it's it's an efficiency thing. You know, we're just trying to maximize the the player, the the production that we can get out of some of these contracts. Not that I, you know, like dislike guys like Ethan Finley being around this team, you know, contributing hedges who has come on as of late and, and provided, uh, you know, some really high quality minutes for this team. So, uh, you know, most of those guys, yes, you got to pick up Danny. Um, Diego, like we talked about, you you hinted at it. But, you know, as soon as we had him after like two or three games, we're like, pay this man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and at this point, um, it's just, uh, again, there's nine games left in this season. I hope that he is able to recapture that form that he had when he first came here. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes again in this offseason. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there and everything. I know we got to chat about this now just because we're in the the bit of a lull here. Um, right. 
but yeah, it's just it's going to look really different, and we knew that. And this team is going to look awesome, in my opinion, uh, yeah. with with what we've seen so far in regard to who Roto has brought in and what is expected to be available to be filled uh, in the in this twenty twenty five year coming up. Yeah, yeah, I think right Rubio. It's like to me, it's clearly the knee. We know he got his knee drained like yeah. in June or something like that, and that was the injury that plagued him all of last year, coming off his career year there in Colorado. So. That's a that's a health factor in there as well. I mean, for me, out of that list, the only like we better is Danny. Yep. I'd say BHI so, too. Oh, for sure, for sure. But I, yeah. I, I think again with him, I think it's it's potentially that we have promised him an extension as long as he came in here, good soldier. And I think he's again, I mm-hmm. he's probably outperformed expectations of the front office, I would think. Uh- Maybe I'm. I don't know. He he, he outperformed all of our expectations. Yeah, right. That, but we didn't know yeah. shit about him really. So like maybe yeah. they they had high hopes for him or not. I it. God, I would just wish there was more fucking transparency with this stuff. It's ridiculous. I know. I know. Yep. Like we put all kinds of time and effort and everything into this, and like we still just can't be like, oh hey, this option next year is X amount is, of dollars. And right. That right. Makes sense. <laughs> you know, yep. like we just gotta sit here and speculate. Like it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's a, a universal frustration from the sickos like us around the, yeah. the league's fandom, right? Um, and even some of the national pundits, you know, uh, you got soccer wise there with Bogert and Goss, and they've got depth charts and cap sheets and all that, but they don't got any more information than than we do. Yeah. Um, anything else for you on on the first team before we move on? What do you think our uh, choice eleven is once we have these three guys in acclimated, ready to go? Right, Spot everybody talk. ready Good. to go. I again, I still think Svatok is like profiles as the starter. Yep. Um, and then I, it's hard to take Brendan off the way yeah. he's played this year. Absolutely. Uh, I know he's coming off a little bit of a stinker last time out. Um, so I think it's Svatok for me again. I've never seen him, I've seen him play once in the Euros. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I, I think that's the intention. So I would think I would put him in Heinzike. Julio would be the the one B for me there in the Heinzike slot. It's Biru and Dessler. Um, I think it's Seba and Danny and Alex at, at this point for the stretch run. Depending on game state, again, it's or, or game plan and or game state, it's either Hot Air or Johnny opposite Bukhari. Um, and then it's Zardis because he mm-hmm. doesn't have any knee problems right now that we know of. And we'll knock on all the wood in sight uh, talking about that. Do you have any differences there in that kind of choice 11? Um, well, I'm just interested to see if you think that that lineup we rolled out against LAFC was a one-off or if we're going to see that again, like, because we did say like, that was the lineup that allowed us to get the most amount of talent out on the pitch to start the game. So I'm I'm curious and I'm interested to see if that was a one-off because I mean, when we were previewing the LAFC game and you, you brought up to me, like, would you do something a little different here to like try to, to throw LAFC off and like, you know, throw them a little bit of a screwball here. And then you get that lineup, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." So I am, I'm very intrigued to see if that was actually part of a plan going forward, or yeah. if that was just a one-off. We tried it out in Leeds Cup, wanted to see what it looks like. I think some of it was the latter, where it's like we're using this game to try something different. Yeah. Um, I also don't think it's something that they did on a whim. I think that is something they've been working on on the training ground a little bit in 11s and and things like that. Something they've been talking about in the film room. But ultimately, for these last nine games, I think it's a bullet in the chamber. I don't okay. think it's I don't think it is the uh, the alignment that we're going to see uh, in the majority of these starting 11s. Um, and again, that that Leagues Cup knockout man when when it's house money like we were talking about, that's the time to try stuff like that. For sure, for sure. I mean. I- Look, I, I guess I'll be a bit contrarian here and say that my choice 11 would be that one with a midfield okay. rotation of Alex, Danny, probably start Johan. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so you have, can still have Owen. You have Owen to move around because we saw in that uh, you know that last LFC matchup where we had Johnny out there and we were able to move Owen as well. So, like, I thought – I think that that might be my choice here. You know, I'm okay. not saying that it's like it's, it's uh, you know, the right answer, but, like, I right. think there's something to it. I do think there's something to it. And yeah. uh, with 10 and, and Bukhari in the fold now and the speed that you're going to get on the other side, if it's hot air and, you know, if it's Johnny as well, it's not like discount or discredit the amount of speed and athleticism that Johnny does have in that small Irish body. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, I, I, I just think there's something to it. And um, I could see it being rolled out more 
than most people might expect. Yeah. Especially if you're seeing if especially if that knee thing is acting up with Rubio, because then like sure. what do you, you don't want to put yourself in a situation. And he, we we've agreed that like Zardis, while how fantastic he has been as of late, yeah. is probably better suited for a 30 minute spurt. Uh, yeah. Or a game that we're really trying to whip balls into the box, get into the mix, and let him go get that stuff. So right. I, I think you could see it more than more than you might expect. Yeah. Well, it, ultimately, I think it's 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 nice because that was like our choice to do that. Um, yeah. We have the depth to fuck around with shit like that. Where if we're not putting Cecilio or Gallagher or Rigoni at the nine yeah. as we did last year in a couple spots, that was because we fucking had to. Yeah, this was because we wanted to, and we were trying shit out. In in, in my opinion, good um, point. So, we'll leave the first team in the rear view. We'll close it out with a little bit of the last business day. But first, quick update on oh, oh. the best keeper in the world, hey. Damian Las, Louisville City, uh, get the victory last Saturday night at home. Uh, they were hosting Sacramento Republican E. This was a four. Three shootout victory, shootout. not a penalty shootout, but just up and down barn burner of a game. We've got our resident Louisville fan, Trevor Allison, and his recap of the Saturday night game. He said, full ish Damien update. Uh, he doesn't have ESPN2, didn't realize it was on real cable till just before kick, but he found as much video as he could. It was an interesting matchup. These are the best teams in each USL conference by goal difference. And in his opinion, Oakland Roots somehow second in the West, despite a negative seven goal differential. We were talking about, you were mentioning stuff about that a couple <laughs> episodes ago. Louisville wins 4-3. Crazy stoppage time winner. A lot more to do than usual for our guy. Damien started the passing sequence on the first Louisville City goal. A hockey hockey assist, if you will. <laughs> Really good save in the 21st after a center back was beat on the dribble. Sacramento scored all three goals in a seven-minute span. That was from the 52nd to the 59th, so a little blitz after halftime there. First was a scramble situation on a corner. Sacramento player found space to finish, and Damian didn't have a chance. The second, poor center back play, not tracking a player for a tap-in that was way easier than it should have been. No chance on that second one either. Potentially a foul on the buildup, but the ref saw it and did not whistle third another center back miss just leaving the wrong guy at the wrong time very uncharacteristic from louisville city in this stretch giving way too much space in the box damian hung out to dry on all three overall a pretty good night for loss despite the three goals allowed no other shots on target except for the goals and the one really good save in the first half so you will take the victory hopefully they can shore up uh some of that uh, nastiness that went on there to start the second half. Louisville up to 50 points from their 22 games, plus 30 goal differential. And like we always say, must be fun to be a Louisville City fan. Yeah, right. We we watched the uh, game-winning score in that game, right? Or, if I, I believe we did, yeah. What a goal yeah. that was. Holy shit, I know. that was I know. awesome. That was the, the, what, like, off a drop ball near the end line, they cross yeah. it in, and then a back heel assist to a tap in 94th minute. Yeah, I encourage Fun. everybody to go find that if you want to see that highlight. But uh, keep it up, Damien. They are, I'll check the schedule real quick. Oh, ooh. Okay, oh. so one two here in the Eastern Conference. Fifty points for Louisville, forty nine for Charleston. Louisville does have two games in hand, but Louisville Saturday seven p.m. hosting Charleston Battery. So might have to tune in for, for that one, uh, considering we we don't have a match this Saturday. But good luck to to Damian and Louisville. Yes, sir. Good luck, boys. All right, last business day. Quick little recap um, of certainly really just the goals because there was fucking six of them here Yeah, against Timbers. This was uh, last Thursday, so almost a week ago now. That was at 10 p.m. Central kickoff, so it was a late one uh, and, and certainly a little deflating at the end for those of us who stayed up past midnight watching this one. Um, very interesting lineup, in my opinion here, E. We had Allstrip in net. Uh, Sal Mazzaferro and Antonio Gomez do start on the back line, but you get Tony Gomez at right back again because Nico Van Rijn also in the 11. Uh, he was the center back pairing with Sal. You get Ruben Bonacera out there on the left. Shaik Ture 
in the midfield once again with Alonzo Ramirez back. So it wasn't like Alonzo went out early last game because he was injured and he's not back in today. We see that same alignment, but Alonzo back in with the armband. Irvin Torres also there in the midfield. Micah, Jimmy, and CJ. Up front, bench, Ariano, the Garcias, Deonda, Pino, uh, Wolf, Cervantes, Steve, and Diego Abarca. Actually, I'll correct myself, just Anthony Garcia, no Chris on this trip. Uh, and Bobo rounded out that bench and hot start here e uh, yeah. second minute this was just an awesome team goal ultimately like building up out of the back you get touches from both gomez and Ture in their new positions here van ryan as well uh then in the build-up um gomez making an overlapping run overlapped jimmy on the right side that was a sight to see you know it was just this guy's been our center back all year now he's mm -hmm. out there the high flying right back uh but great ball here by Jimmy into that back post on the left where CJ is. And he nods it back across the face of net. Micah slams at home for the early lead. And that was Micah's first goal on the year. What? Yeah. First goal of the year. Oh, because the, because the premier championship versus Cancun. Correct. That's in its own championship tier. Of that's stats. right. Yeah. That's a, it's got its own little page on football ref and everything. Yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's in the books there. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I was actually watching the first, uh, I can't remember how many minutes of this game, but we know we went up to nil and I was like, yeah. shit, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm going to go do some other stuff that right? I was, <laughs> that I was trying to get into that night. But, um, yeah, this was a beautiful goal. You're really starting to see a lot of chemistry come between these these yeah. these uh three attacking players now yeah. and uh Micah kind of getting into the groove there in that more forward nine position so uh yeah. you love to see it it was eight minutes later Austin really controlling the possession early on they're working it around the Timbers defensive third here and Ruben puts a ball right into the middle of the box and Micah had run right into that space it was a good ball or a, a good pass there good ball by Ruben and I thought a great finish by Micah kind of just redirects it past the keeper here on the run and uh, you know, 10 minute span. You've got a Micah Burton brace. Uh, so again, to your point, you see these guys up front and Ruben getting in on the action here with the, the long cross in um, really starting to click up front. And this is where boys like we can't slip up at the back. Now we struggled to score all year. We've been okay. Defensively right. start scoring. Got to keep our heads on straight and to their credit, or in their defense, maybe, rather. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think uh, any, two of these goals were really the defense's fault, or, or t team defense, rather. 20th minute here, Marvin Loria pulls one back. Um, Shaik Ture turnover near the 18-yard box, which was his second in a three-minute span. Um, so a little bit of leeway. He's not a midfielder, right? He, he yeah. was a winger, I believe, at first, and then converted to, to fullback. Uh, at his last stop, which, which I think was young PSV. Um, but that Marvin Loria, right, he's one of their first team assets, and he certainly looked it in this game. There's a great save by Marcus in the 27th minute on a broken play in the box, but then five minutes later in the 32nd, Josh Penn gets out on the break for Timbers 2, crosses towards uh, Icoba, who's their leading scorer we talked about two episodes back, or – yeah, two episodes back now, uh, and he back heals it. This was just yep. a sick little finish there uh, past Marcus. Ties things up. Great finish. Great finish. Got to tip your hat to him for sure. Second minute of stoppage. This is literally the last moment of the first half. Portland breaks a line in the midfield with a through ball to Loria. He takes two sh touches, rips a shot right from that 18-yard line. Curls it around Marcus Allstrup for his own brace here. And I think, again, he's, he showed in that first half why he's one of their first team assets. He's been in and out with injuries this year. Um, but, man, it made his impact on this one. Yep, very similar thing uh, to, with CJ, where it just looks like he doesn't really belong there. You know, for sure. They're kind of in that transitory period where they're trying to like make that push up and everything like that. But you can still just see the class and the physicality yeah. a little bit. You get Bobo in for Irvin at the half and then 58th minute uh sebastian pino in for tony gomez which did move shike back to his right back position and and micah back into that midfield uh so a little bit more of a, a traditional fc toe look here in the 58th and we capitalize right away because in the mm -hmm. 59th minute you get jimmy and ruben combining on the near side of the broadcast camera so on the left in this instance and jimmy Again, fires across towards that back post, opposite side this time, 
right to his buddy CJ, who we learned from uh, CJ's recent interview uh, on the Vamos Verde podcast. Roommate connection here. Hey. Uh, CJ heads it past the keeper. We're tied up again at three. Uh, and again, even though this doesn't uh, work out our way in the end, it was a fun match to watch. Yep. I'm just, it's, it's hard to say fun, you know, when you, right. when we look at where this team's sitting and the, the, the small amount of games that they have left to make up this ground that they have conceded throughout the entire season. I know we got a couple games in hand on some teams, um, but man, it would have been nice to, to earn three points here from a game. I thought that we probably deserved three points, but credit to the dudes for fighting back and at least scrounging up one there. Yeah, you do get just closing out with the sub notes here. Steve and Diego come in for Micah and Jimmy, and then Anthony DeAnda makes his return for Nico Van Ryan in the 76th minute. So we do go to the shootout, tied at three. And the first 14 shots go Crazy. in. Um, in the eighth round, Sebastian Pino pings his attempt off the post, and then Marcus Allstrup gets beat by Max Eisenberg to drop that additional point. Uh, and then after Sal's, I don't know if you saw this, but after Sal's attempt that he buries, uh, he goes over, you know, uh, gives a little dap to Marcus. And then he comes back by the Timbers player, holds his hand out for a high five, doesn't get one, stands there, waits for it, doesn't get one. Ref comes over, says, all right, man, get out of here. But I appreciate <laughs> the antics for sure. Yeah. He's <laughs> got the uh, Defari, uh exactly <laughs> leniency uh, yeah. clause built in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sal, I believe, has played every single minute this season for FCTO. So he is our Iron Man for sure. Now we're looking ahead to this Sunday night, 6 mm. p.m. Central, taking on Sporting KC2. So Scared Money Derby, episode three for 2024. Austin won in May in penalties at home, 2 2 in regulation. And then SKC. 2-2 in regulation at their place back in June. They take the extra point in Penn. So three points apiece. We will break the tie here one way or another. And this, just looking at the Western Conference standings, is an enormous yep. matchup. Because we are currently, we're tied for 11th, but on those tiebreakers, we sit in 13th out of 14 teams. And we are, but still, nine points back of that seventh and final playoff spot. So again, it is certainly doable, but a very steep hill to climb. We should note, we have a game in hand on every team above us in the standings at this point. And we have two games in hand on our opponent this Sunday in Sporting KC2. We have two games in hand on Timbers 2 and on Ventura County. Uh, so uh, again, we have the opportunity to still, I think, probably control our own destiny because a lot of these matchups, Sporting KC, we've got two games in hand. We're six points back. This is a six-pointer. Uh, still many opportunities for this team to claw and fight their way back in it. Uh, and this is the first one coming out of uh, well, coming out of our slumber here for the League's Cup. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be an uphill battle, but like you said, there is room to get it done. Um, it's it it man, it's just been such a difficult season because we're actually looking healthy and 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 yep. full right now with this roster and you're starting to see, like I mentioned there, those three attacking players who outside of Sal, um, Alonzo are probably, you know, uh, they're on the, the short list of the best players on the team. So it's yep. been nice to see them start to develop throughout the course of this season. Um, but here we go, you know, crunch time boys. This is what it's all about. Yeah. You know, we've talked at length before about Cameron Habibula, right? He still leads them in goal contributions. He's got eight goals, three assists, 20 year old homegrown, we love Pau Vidal, that big bastard mm -hmm. coming in, banging goals. It it looks like he only 12 appearances, just two starts this year. I think he's been struggling with injuries throughout. Um, but Beto Avila, who killed us last time, he yep. had the first half brace for SKC2 back in June. Where's number 99? He's got eight goals and two assists to his name as well. He's a 23-year-old forward. And what caught my eye outside of the production is that he is from – Austin, Texas, a uh, youth career with Austin Texans SC, Houston Dynamo Academy from 2017 to 18, and then Lone Star SC before signing an academy deal with Austin Bold in April 2019. He ended up with 31 appearances for the Austin Bold, four goals between 2019 and 2021. And then he's got 50 appearances with Dynamo Dose and Charleston Battery in USL 
between 2022 and 2023. Now here doing good work with Sporting KC too, and obviously punished us last time. So number 99, the Austinite Beto Avila, another guy to watch for here on Sunday night. Definitely a dude to watch play. He's solid. Yep. I'll cheer for the Austinite, uh, you know, all but three times this Correct. year, and this is the third. So anything else for you, E, before we shut it down here on episode 167? Come on, Roto. Give us one more. Give us one more. <laughs> You, I see you pointing. Are you pointing? You got a believe sign above you like Ted Lasso? <laughs> <laughs> no, just big cat art. <laughs> All right, everybody. One more reminder that uh, not planning on running an episode on Sunday, but – transfer window draft for the best ball league that live stream with all our friends moon tower soccer we are austin tv verde all day texas ring of fire verde pendant that's tuesday night 7 p.m live on our youtube our twitter our instagram and then we'll be back regularly scheduled wednesday episode previewing austin fc's restart road match at nashville sc recapping uh, FC Toes matchup against Sporting KC2. I'm sure previewing their next match as well. And we'll have the Verde Pendant boys along with us to go through all of that. Enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. We'll do the same. We'll do it a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more if we get this deadline signing. Until next Wednesday, he's E and I'm Zach. Vamos Austin FC, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>